I think that when we look back at some of the details that, that Radford inc includes in the account, um, we can sort of broaden our understanding of, of what might have been the possible reasons for Tubman's success. Um, first of all, she was a remarkable person. That much is clear. Um, she was brilliant and she was brave. And I think that those two, two aspects of her character um, combined uh, to make her formidable for all the people who, who had a bounty on her head, which was said to be as much as uh, $12,000. So I think that she was um, a unique individual. But in addition to that, uh, she was someone who had had lots of different kinds of experiences um, as a girl. Uh, when she was a girl, um, and her name was Minty then, Araminta. She changed her name to Harriet, uh, which was her mother's first name, after she escaped uh, to uh, protect her identity. But when she was a girl, she was hired out to a number of different families. So um, she wasn't just working in one plantation. So she got to see a wide variety of contexts, different kinds of households. She got to hear um, different slaveholders talking about things that they observed or information that they might have been bringing to their dining room tables. And I think she was able to sort of build this um, broad kind of file of facts of um, bits of information and names and people. And I think that that helped her to um, be able to escape for herself and then to aid others in escaping later on. There's an interesting um, um, tidbit too to follow up on regarding her success, which has to do with information about Tubman that comes from the Civil War period when she was a nurse to the Union soldiers and also to um, the, the black um, contraband, as they were called, that is black slaves who um, ran away and went to the Union camps. Um, Tubman was said to have been an incredible healer by the soldiers. She was said to have understood how to use native plants. And um, that, to me, is very interesting. There's only a tidbit of this um, in Bradford, but it suggests that Tubman knew uh, the environment in which she lived, that she understood something about um, native plants in her, um, her own home of, of Maryland, and that she applied that knowledge to other locations when she was stationed in South Carolina, for instance. So she knew the landscape. She understood how plants grew. She knew the waterways. And uh, she was very observant. And this also, I think, contributed to her success. Well, the relationship between um, oppression and agency in the history of slavery um, is one that is central. And uh, it's one that I think uh, is really apparent in Harriet Tubman's life. But it can be lost if we only focus on her as a heroic figure. Um, that's why I think the early picture of her life is so important. Trying to imagine her um, as, as a child who did not have the benefit of the protection of her parents from being sent out to uh, various um, people who wanted to hire her. Uh, Tubman was actually described as um, a sickly child. Um, she was a small girl, very weak, and um, she was often ill. And when she came back to her home plantation after these stints working for other people, her mother would have to nurse her back to health because of whippings and beatings and uh, terrible things she had to do, such as uh, catching you know, rats in the rivers. Um, so thinking about everything that she faced as a child, her vulnerability, her realness as a person, I think helps us to remember that slavery was uh, an incredibly oppressive system that sought to uh, render some people out of the category of humanity. Nevertheless, people resisted this because they were human beings. And we see um, the necessity of defining oneself as a person, a person deserving of liberty in Harriet Tubman's life. And she says, and this is recounted in, in uh, Bradford's uh, biography, that she feels that she has two rights on this earth, liberty and death. That's a familiar saying. But uh, she is saying uh, in that line that she feels that she is a person with the same human rights as any other person, one of those being liberty. So regardless of the fact that she was born into a circumstance that was deeply humiliating and, um, and uh, thoroughly violent, she determined that she was not going to accept that circumstance. But I think it's really important to say here that uh, most 
enslaved blacks were not able to escape. Uh, it took uh, a really unusual set of circumstances that uh, allowed some people to have the opportunity to escape. Harriet Tubman is one of those people. She stands out as, um, as the sole figure who had the kind of life that she had. So even though uh, we can see her life as an example of um, um, resistance and agency, we always have to remember um, the thousands, hundreds of thousands, and then millions of people who did not share the life experience that she had. But we do have um, the lyrics to Sorrow Songs that Tubman told to Bradford and that Tubman explained the use of to Bradford. Um, the first of these songs is not titled in the source, but I'll just read a few lines from it. Hail, O oh, hail, ye happy spirits. Death no more shall make ye fear. Grief nor sorrow, pain nor anguish, shall no more distress you, dear. And this song goes on for four more stanzas, and Bradford recounts that Tubman sang the song to her, um, sweetly is the descriptor that Bradford uses. And Tubman says that this song was a song she would use as a signal to escaping slaves. If they heard her sing that song the first time, they should pay attention. If they heard her sing it a second time, they knew that it was safe for them to leave. Um, there's another song that is recounted right near the same place uh, in the book, and this is the, the familiar song that uh, many of us have heard of, uh, Go Down Moses. And so Tubman recounts to Bradford the lyrics in the book, saying, Oh, go down, Moses, way down into Egypt's land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Oh, Pharaoh said we would go cross. Let my people go. And don't get lost in the wilderness, and let my people go. Now, what Tubman says to Bradford about the use of this song is that if uh, slaves who wanted to escape heard it, they should know this was a warning that they should actually stay because there was danger on the trail. So these are um, examples of African-American cultural history, uh, lyrics to songs, and their uses preserved for us right here uh, in this account.